thank you for the introduction. I'll present our automatic system for learning and forecasting behaviors from first-person video. Let's start with some concrete examples. How can we answer the question, what will the scientists do next? It's hard to know with certainty, but we should be able to make informed predictions about the future by watching what the scientist does. I'll step through an example of forecasting a person's future. Consider a home environment, visualized first as a blueprint, and now in three dimensions. As the person moves through the environment, we capture their behavior with a first-person camera. We use this video to continuously update a prediction model. The model is used to forecast future goals. They are colored by their probabilities here. After I start the video, the person will pick up a mug and the goal in the kitchen will turn red. This means our model becomes confident the person will go to the kitchen. Now we visualize the person's point of view inside the environment. The person arrives at our model's forecasted goal inside the kitchen. There are a few veins of related work. One approach is to predict the future motion of a person or object. Another method attempts to predict the next short-term action that will occur. And another approach is to predict pixel appearance or motion in future frames. Finally, decision theoretic approaches have been used to predict the motion of agents in a scene. Decision theoretic models are fundamental to reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, an agent receives reward for every action taken. In a sense, the rewards are given. Whereas in inverse reinforcement learning, rewards are learned from demonstrated behavior. The learned reward function can be used to forecast the future actions taken by the agent. However, both IRL and RL assume access to the environment. In order for our IRL approach to forecast without access, we must instead build a representation of the environment. We designed an inverse reinforcement learning approach for the task of predicting the goals of a first-person camera wearer. We jointly learn behavioral and environmental models, whereas other IRL approaches assume the environment as prior knowledge. This involves tracking the person's state continuously as they go about their activities, as well as discovering their goals. And finally, our method learns and forecasts online in a self-supervised fashion. So given the first person video, our approach continuously models and forecasts the person's future goal. What is a goal? There are many possible definitions, but in ours, a goal consists of a 3D location as well as information about what objects a person holds. In our previous example, the person started in the office and took the cup to the kitchen. Their goal was to be in the kitchen with a cup. In this sense, a goal is a specific joint configuration of the user and the environment. It's a state in a high dimensional state space of all possible configurations. There could be many goals in the environment, which means that the set of possible goals is a subset of all possible states. A person is always in a single state at any point in time. Some states are not goals, so a person generally wants to move from the non-goal states to the goal states. The person moves between states by taking actions, such as changing physical locations or by picking up or putting down an object. Formally, we infer several hidden components of a Markov decision process. Again, we discover the goals that a person has. In order to achieve goals, a person follows specific transitions between states in the environment. We learn these transitions in order to infer the reward function. Rewards encode a person's preferences. They may prefer one route to another, or prefer one object to another, or prefer one goal to another. Based on the MDP, the task is to continuously update a probability distribution over a person's future goals. Making this prediction requires several components, including our learned goals, it requires a partial trajectory tracked through the state space, and it requires our learned reward function. So back to our example of the person in the office. With no partial trajectory observed, 
our method may produce an uncertain goal distribution over the bedroom and kitchen. After the person grabs the mug, the trajectory grows and the prediction will become more confident that the person's goal is in the kitchen. Next, I'll discuss how the reward function specifically is learned. We use the framework of maximum entropy inverse reinforcement learning as the basis of our approach. In this framework, trajectories from a data set of demonstrations are used to maximize the likelihood of a trajectory distribution P, which is a Gibbs distribution defined in terms of a parameterized reward function. In our setting, we want to forecast and accumulate demonstrations continuously. In online learning theory, one way to measure the performance of an algorithm is through its regret. Regret measures the difference between the loss of an online learner and the hindsight loss of a batch learner. A small regret means that the online learner performed well with respect to a learner trained on all of the data at once. Now I'll sketch the main learning steps to fit our model. First, value iteration is performed over the state space in order to compute the policy, which is a global one-step model of how the person will behave. Second, a projected gradient descent step is taken on the parameters of the policy. The gradient is computed in terms of the expected feature difference of the expert demonstrations and the current policy. The features include information about the person's location, the objects they have, and what object they're interacting with. And a projection step helps our algorithm obtain the following guarantee. We prove that our algorithm is no regret, which means as demonstrations accumulate, the time average regret approaches zero. Despite the fact that our model has to make predictions without all of the data, its online performance approaches that of a model trained with all of the data. In our experiment, we measured the average regret of our algorithm. Our no regret bound holds. This means that in practice, we probably don't have to worry about being worse than a batch model that's seen all of the data. Our model doesn't have to see all of the data to begin forecasting. Okay, so let's step back for a second. How does our online IRL approach fit into the overall algorithm? Next, I'll step through a visualization of each component. We continuously track the state of the user with SLAM and activity detection. The state is visualized as a green sphere. As user demonstrations are observed, goals are discovered with a stop detection procedure. We continuously forecast the goals of the user, illustrated here again with colors corresponding to their probabilities. So the red office indicates that our model is confident the person's goal is in the office. At every goal, our model is updated. At every state, a new forecast is made. We evaluated our method on a data set of separate environments. Our evaluation me measures the likelihood of the true goal under each model's prediction. We built several baselines that rely on our state tracking and goal detection approaches and observed that our method outperformed the others. Our method has the benefit of explicitly reasoning over the state space and graph of possible behaviors with our online inverse reinforcement learning approach. We performed a feature ablation to illustrate the importance of various components. While position is an important component, the highest performance is obtained by also incorporating the semantic components of states and actions. To summarize, we designed an inverse reinforcement learning approach for the task of predicting the goals of a first person camera wearer. We jointly learn a model of the agent and the environment, and our method learns and forecasts online in a self-supervised fashion. And I'll end with an illustration of our method running on a learned environment. This is our model making predictions in the laboratory environment from our data set, in which the scientist performs a series of goal-oriented tasks, and we pr predict her goals accurately. So if you're interested in more details, please come to Poster 1 this afternoon. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? I have one question. Yes. So you mentioned you're using action and object and uh, for estimating goals. And you also mentioned the uh, object and goal relationship as one example, right? Right. And uh, were there any other examples about action? How, what kind of action? contributes to what kind of goal in your setting? Hmm. 
Um, I don't have any prepared offhand, but certainly there are a lot of, um, a, a lot of the, the data was collected with these correlations in mind. Um, so, um, for instance, I think if a scientist prepared her gel, um, knowing that she was going to take that gel to the gel room to perform electrophoresis, um, that was one of the, the behaviors that our, or the correlations that our model discovered, yeah. I see. Any other questions? I was also curious about the scalability, like, uh, can it, I mean, the environment is, how big is the environment in your experimental setup? So the environment, environment size varies. Um, usually it encompasses at least several rooms. Um, so there's the, there are a couple office environments. Um, they have hallways. Um, the home environment is basically the entire floor of, of an apartment. And the scientists' environment, they had a few lab benches, uh, a couple rooms here and there, and a f cabinets and a refrigerator. And so the, the scale is definitely at the, um, I guess you can sort of see here, maybe like four or five rooms, but it, it should generalize. You should be able to record at larger scale. I see, thank you. So if there's no more questions, let's move on to the oh, question. Yeah. Uh, just, just a really quick question, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you imagine this scaling up to first-person car video? and a whole city, so I can imagine this scaling up to learning all of these goal states of, of vehicles, and then automated vehicles just following that. Sorry, can you re repeat the, uh, the first part of the so question? How, how would you see this scaling up to, say, a whole city using first-person vehicle video? Ah, ah, okay. Well, so with video, it, it may be possible. Um, actually, one of the original uh, applications of maximum entropy inverse reinforcement learning was to predict the future destinations of taxi cab drivers. So um, they did have a graph there at, at city scale. So um, the underlying inference will be similar, so it should be able to scale to that size. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.